So to start with, I'm going to show you how you track product lists. Um, now product lists, as I mentioned, are when you have a list of products um, and those could be in certain widgets around your site. They could be on the search page or they could be on the category pages. And essentially you want to know how many times each product appeared in a particular list and whereabouts, what order it was. So this is uh, the homepage of my website and you can see I've listed, I've got a product list here of three kettles. So this would be product one in position one in the list, this would be position two in the list, and this would be position three in the list. And I would give my list a name such as top sellers um, or top sellers homepage. And the way that would look in GA is once you go into the reporting and you come into e-commerce and product list performance, you'll then get a breakdown that looks like this. So you'll get the list name, top sellers, how many times that particular list has been viewed, how many times products within that list have been clicked, and then a click-through rate. And you can also change the metrics. So maybe you want to see if, uh, if the position of a product in the list changes things. So for example, uh, in product position one, you get more clicks. In fact, you get three times as many clicks as the item in position three. Now that can be useful to um, for your for your marketing and your product positioning strategy, and where you put content on the site. Um, and then you can drill down again into product. So I can see here kettle one um, has been seen fifty one times, and kettle one again it might in the case of this site it's actually in two lists it's not just in one list it's in two lists um, it's on the top sellers page but it's also in this list here which is the kettles category page now although the lists are identical and the products are in the same orders it doesn't have to be and this technically is classed as a separate list so um, we can see kettle one here is the most popular product it's getting a large number of clicks. So let's drill into Kettle 1 and we might want to put product list in here. Let's put product list name so we can see that Kettle 1 has been seen 43 times when it's in the top sellers list but only seven times when it's in the main list. However, the click-through rate on the main list is much higher and this uh, this helps answer the age-old question. A lot of clients would often come to me and say, uh, I want to know how people found a particular product. What was the flow through the site? And this kind of report, um, we couldn't really answer that very well uh, before, but this kind of report makes that a lot easier. So we now know, for example, that even though that uh, main list, that category page, is seen less often, it has a higher click-through rate. So most people who end up on the on the details page for this particular kettle, we now know where they're coming from. We now know what percentage come from the category page and what percentage come from this top sellers list. And if you're in the process of optimizing, uh, optimizing your site, then you, know, you could try swapping the orders of kettle two and kettle one, and you could look instead at position. So this kettle has only ever been in, in position one, but if it was in position two, you might see the click-through rate change. So how do you go about implementing this? Well, let's take a look at the code. So we're gonna go back to the home page, And the first thing I should mention is that um, this code is implemented with Google Tag Manager. And because of that, I use a data layer on the page. So for those of you not familiar with the data layer, it is essentially a uh, JavaScript object which has a list of um, uh, variables about meta information about the page. So let me show you if I put data layer here and show you this. So this is my data layer. Um, I've got a basket here which shows what products someone's got in the basket. 
uh, how much the basket is worth, and also a bit about the user um, and their status. Okay. Now, this data layer is used by Google Tag Manager, and, and data is picked up here um, for use uh, to, in to inject into the e-commerce tracking code. But we'll come back for that for the moment. So let's look at the code. And you can see here that I have a bit of script, JavaScript. And this is the code that is telling Google about the product list on the page. So um, if you're not a techie, then you'll have to get the devs to implement this. But for everyone else, you can see I have a list of my products in this list. So I've got the category of the product, the name of the product, the price of the product, the ID, and the position. So this is the position it is in in the list. And then further down here, we have the next product, Kettle 2, which is in position 2. And then further along, Kettle 3 in position 3. So all that data can be rendered um, onto the page by your server-side script. I then loop, uh, you don't need to do this, this is just the way I've done it, but I loop through each of these products and I add, um, uh, I, I add a variable called list top sellers just to show that each of these products is in the top sellers list. And then finally down here, this is the code which actually sends that information to Google. So the command is e-commerce because I'm telling Google that this is to do with enhanced e-commerce. There's an optional currency code here that I put in just because I can. And then I'm giving Google the command impressions followed by products, which is my variable here. So essentially this whole string, uh, this whole object or array of objects is being inserted here. Okay, so this is telling Google all about the products which are in the top sellers list. And that's being pushed onto my data layer. You can see it, you might be able to see it here. So we've got e-commerce object, impressions, and then three variables, three objects, each of which contain the different kettles. So kettle one's here, kettle two here, kettle three here. You can see it's in list top sellers and its name kettle one and it's in position one. So that all goes above the Google Tag Manager code. So when Google Tag Manager loads, it will read in uh, that, that um, data in the data layer will be pulled into Google and um, the correct code fired. Uh, and to make sure of that, if you go into your base tag, um, I said earlier to enable e-commerce features, and because I've ticked use data layer, that is why the data is being picked up from that particular data layer. If you didn't tick that, then um, you would have to, to, do it, to do this another way. Okay, let's discard those. So that is on the uh, homepage, the top sellers list. Let's have a look on this particular page. So again, this page also has a data layer and it has an e-commerce object. And notice again, we're using impressions and each of the kettles is there. The only difference here is that the name of the list is now main. It's not top sellers, it's main. So now we're telling Google that this, all these products belong in the main list, which is why when we go back to this report here, product list performance report, you can see that I've got two lists, one called top sellers and one called main. And so that is where those names are being picked up from. And you can call them whatever you want. Um, this not set is uh, was obviously a coding error. It was because the list name wasn't set when I fired this particular code. So um, I hope that's given you a bit of an introduction into product lists. Um, the one thing I also want to show you is um, once you've got all this set up, you can start to have quite a bit of um, insight when you create custom reports. So I've created this custom report which has each of the different types of thing or metrics to do with products. So the first one is viewing a product. Second one is clicking on one of those lists. 
So if I see this list here, when I click on that, again, that is recorded as a metric product list clicks. We've got add to carts, we've got checkouts and revenue. And then I'm breaking that down by product and product list name. So when you run this, you will see that Kettle One, for example, I know it's been seen, uh, the product page has been seen 18 times. I know that six of those times people came from lists. Uh, it's been added to people's baskets twice, but no one's checked out with it. And if we drill down, you can see the breakdown of where people, how people got to the product page. So 13 came from top sellers list, five came from the main, and both of the additions to cart were when people came through the main list. So that's interesting. Although this is dummy data, you can begin to see that maybe the top sellers for some reason isn't working. People maybe click on it just because it's very visible on the homepage, but they're not so interested. It's the people who actually dig around the site, end up going to the Kettle's category page, and then coming through to the details page. Those are the people who are adding it to their basket. So I hope that's given you a bit of an insight into enhanced e-commerce and uh, why you should implement it on your website.